to welcome you guys to our very first virtual Eyes to Kids for Christ. We have some fun things in store for you, so let's get started with some awesome praise and worship. To lights, to flames, consuming all of me. Yeah. 
Sister Pam, and today is going to be my pleasure to talk to you about offering. Now let's say you were walking outside and you found 10 pennies. Isn't that awesome? Money on the ground, wealth laying there for us. Let's say we have the 10 pennies. God only asks for one of those 10 pennies, and he leaves us with nine. And let's say, okay, now we've been doing everything that mom and dad has asked us to do, and we have our first allowance. And our first allowance is $10. Isn't that awesome? So now let's go in. We're counting our $10, and we know that we want to give something to the Lord. So what would we do? How much would our tithe be? Of those $10, God is only asking that we give $1, and he's still leaving us with the nine. Isn't that fantastic? Now, okay, we're getting older and we have our very first job. So we have earned our first $100. I am so excited that first hundred and to be able to bring that to the Lord. You know how much that tithe is? It's still that same 10%. So we would give God $10 of that 100 and we would still have $90 left. And that is awesome. Now let's say we're in our job or we have our own business and we have made our first $1,000. So now we are working with $1,000 and we want to bring this. We're excited and we want to tell everybody about it. Hey, I made my first $1,000. God sees that you've made that first $1,000 and he's just as excited for you. Now, will you trust him with that? If you do, you're going to tie to God $1,000 hundred dollars and he's still going to leave you with nine hundred dollars now let me tell you something about God that one penny that we gave when we were just starting to trust God and just learning about trust God and trusting God is just as important as that one hundred dollars God sees our finance as the same because he's still asking for that same ten percent no matter if it's a penny no matter if it's a hundred because the same Malachi 3.10 works for that penny that works for the hundred. And Malachi 3.10 says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. Again, that same blessing for that hundred dollars is the same blessing that's on that penny. Now, if God has impressed upon your heart to give a tithe or offering, ask your mom or dad to come into the room and they can text to give to the number listed below. Now, we're going to move on to our next segment. Thanks. Hello, and welcome to Living Word Christian Center, our children's church. My name is Brother Norman, and I want to let you know that we're ex I'm very excited about bringing God's word to you tonight. Tonight we will be teaching on what is faith. I am very excited and honored to be sharing God's word with you tonight. I really do miss all of the children. I really miss standing in front of you guys, watching you grow, watching you mature, watching you become young adults. Um, I hope that very soon we'll be able to be back in our area where we can interact and we can continue to learn and study God's word together. Remember, tonight, we're going to talk about what is faith, and before we do that, let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before you, to come before you, to come before these children and bring God's word. I ask that you open their hearts and their ears, that they are receptive to what is taught and what is said, that is unhindered and unchecked. Satan, you have no place in here right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So. I have a little clip that I want to show you guys, and let's see what using your faith could look like. Believe with every step. Got it. I am not afraid. 
Sexy Dad, remember? Hey, yeah. This last step is for you. <gasps> so pretty interesting, right? We know to cross that area without the bridge down definitely takes faith, right? It definitely takes faith to cross that bridge. But how much faith? Because it looked like he kind of lost it a little bit at the end there, right? But let's look at Romans 12 and 3. God has given every man a measure of faith. If you turn to Romans 12 and 3, it'll show you that. It, that reads that in my Bible. Um, Romans 12 and 3. That God has given every man a measure of faith. God has given us all the same amount of faith. He hasn't given me more than he's given you. He hasn't given you more than he's given me. And the same faith that he gave us is the same faith that Jesus had. And how do I know? Well, let's go to the word and find out. So if you have your Bibles with you, I would like for you to turn to Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we cannot see God, so it takes faith to believe. We have It takes our faith to believe that our Father is there. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you have to have some type of relationship, and faith is required. Faith is definitely required to please God. To It seems as though faith is required to, to interact with God. You have to have faith in his word. You have to have faith in him. You have to believe he is who he is. So if you look at the screen right now, a lot of times in the class, we usually have a game show. We usually have little things that we have where we can have prizes where you can answer questions. So my game is called Family Faith. So we're going to review some answers that may have come up in class on what we could have defined faith as you guys have been pretty good at answering questions and pretty and you guys answers have been pretty much spot on so we're going to look at a few answers so number one faith confidence reliance choosing to believe a choice believing god key to blessings key to victory putting god's word to work and relationship all of these answers are good answers when you're talking about faith. Of course, faith is a choice. You have to choose to believe. God is not going to make you believe. You have to choose to believe. You have to have you have to completely trust him. There is no halfway. You have to completely trust him. You have to definitely have confidence in God and you have to have confidence in yourself and in your faith. It's the key to your blessings. How can God bless you if you don't have any faith? Right? It's the key to victory in everything we do. So, in our Bibles, we are already at the book of Hebrews, so we're going to see what the Bible says faith is. Let's turn to, if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Wow. Wow. But wouldn't it just be great if we can see it? Then it, you wouldn't need God, right? It wouldn't take faith because you would already see it, right? You would already be able to say, hey, there it is. I know it's there. You don't have to believe. You don't have to have any faith, right? So, hey, what does this mean? So what does the scripture actually mean? Well, basically, you are to believe something even if you do not have the evidence to prove it, right? If you are sick... And you say, by his stripes, I was healed. And you believe that you were healed when Jesus went to the cross. Then you are healed. Even if you do not feel good or you not feel well, you are to still believe it. You are to have faith that you are healed, right? It's the ability to believe without demanding proof. So when things happen, you are to believe that you are healed. Are you going to just go to God and demand, prove to me that I'm healed? No, you are to believe by faith. That's what faith is for. You have to believe by faith the things that you uh, expect from God. Faith.
is kind of like making a painting. You don't see your painting at first, but you believe you can make a painting. You just know it. So you get a little paint on your brush and put it on the paper. Then you get a little more paint on your brush and put it on the paper. And after a while, the painting is there. Now you can see it. That's kind of how faith works. Great clip, huh? Great clip on faith. So, let's go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And always acknowledge Him and He will direct your path, right? Faith takes trust. You have to trust in God with all your heart. You can't have a little trust in God and say, Hey, when um, it's not working in your favor, you say, Hey, well, I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. No. Continue to trust God. Do not wait or stand strong, stand still, and wait for God's word to work for you, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few examples. So let's look at Noah from the Bible. Noah's a great example because God gave Noah instructions to build the ark. So when we look in Genesis chapter 6, it talks about the story of Noah building the ark. God gave him detailed, blue, detailed blueprint. So it was detailed. He told him how everything was supposed to be inside the ark, outside the ark, how everything needed to be as far as length, width, height. Everything was explained to him. Next, God explained to Noah why he wanted Noah to build the ark. He told him why. So you got the blueprints and he tells you why. And what does Noah do? He goes out and he builds the ark. So, by faith, Noah built the ark. Noah, there was no evidence of rain to come. I'm pretty sure any, it was not raining, it was not drizzling. I'm sure Noah didn't, it wasn't a certain sign that Noah had that it was going to rain. He just built the ark by faith. And guess what? Noah devoted over 100 years and preparing for something that he had no evidence or no clue that was going to happen. Over 100 years. Can you imagine spending over 100 years of your life building something? And you're doing it by faith because you're not sure what's going to happen, right? Wow. You're not sure what's going to happen, so you continue to build. This ark was massive. Massive. But let's look at Noah. Maybe Noah had watched the news. You think, guys, you think Noah had a TV? He probably turned on TV, saw the weekly forecast, said, hey, it's going to rain. Rain is coming soon. It's going to rain for the next 40 days. It's going to rain for the next four years. Was it very cloudy outside? Was it lightning? Was it thundering? On his cell phone, on his smartphone, did he receive an alert saying, hey, it's going to be a flood warning. Something's coming. There's a lot of water on the way. No. He just built the ark by faith also and it was something that God had him do in which his family did help him but wow he went ahead and without questioning God without any question he went ahead and he built the ark praise God so let's look at another example another example in the Bible was in Matthew uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 27 through 31 there were two guys that were blind. There were two blind men, and they wanted to be healed of their sight. They wanted their sight back. And Jesus asked both of them. He asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Do you believe? Now, Jesus knows what he can do. He has faith in what he can do. But do you believe? Faith takes you. It Faith takes your part. It takes work on your part that you have to believe. When Jesus asked that question, these men said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They didn't say, yes, Lord, I think you can. Oh, can you just try it? No, they said, yes, Lord. They believed that he was able to do it. And Jesus said, your faith, because of your faith, be it done unto you. And by faith, they received their sight. 
not just because they said, yes, Lord. No, they were confident. Some of those words we had in the beginning, they were confident. They were confident in what they were saying. They believed, and it was a choice. It was a key to their blessing, right? Their blessing of receiving their eyesight again. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. So, but most important, and my most important point, I think, believe, I think to me is, what about when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right? And John 3.16, turn to John 3.16. You guys know what John 3.16 is, right? We all know that scripture. Let's turn to John 3.16. If you have time, if you have your Bibles, I know everybody has their Bible. I know all our children have their Bibles. I know that's one thing. That's the first thing we're going to ask for for Christmas or birthday. We don't have one, right? Can we have a Bible, Mama? All right? That's what I expect when you guys get back, all right? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Basically, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died, and then on the third day, he rose. We believe this. We believe our big brother, Jesus Christ, did all that for us only by reading our word and listening to our prophet teach to us on Sundays and every Wednesday. Remember, these are just words. There's no picture. There's no evidence envelope. There's nothing in here. We just believe by faith that Jesus did all this for us. That he loves us, that God loves us. Our Father cares, he, he loves us. He will never leave us or forsake us, right? We trust that his word is true. His word never returns void. It performs what it says it's going to do. Now, that's faith, right? We must understand that's faith, right? That's faith. Now, in order for us to have this faith, we have to believe God is who he is. I know some of you out there will, would like to be saved. I want you to be saved, but it has to be your choice. But if some of you out there want to give your life to Christ, I have a little prayer on the screen. I would like for you to raise your right hand and say this prayer with me before we end. Dear Lord, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe, I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Guide my life and help me to do your will. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. We can't wait to get back into the church. Um, keep watching the Faith Conference all week. We have a lot for you. We love you guys and take care. Hi, guys. You know, can I share something with you? I have two birthdays. You might be saying, two birthdays? How do you have three, two birthdays? Well, you know what? Let me read a scripture to you, which is a clue as to what I'm saying. Turn with me to John chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So let me tell you about my two birthdays. In this natural realm, my mom and dad, I was born January 8, 1967. I didn't have anything to do with that. But you know what, my second birthday, I had a lot to do with it because I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision whether or not I was gonna accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. So guess what? On a Wednesday night, October 7th, 1992, I was born again. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And guess what, you can too. In fact, if you'd like to, I'd like to pray a prayer with you for you to do that. It's not complicated, it's not, God doesn't make things difficult. It's really simple. In fact, if you'd like to pray that prayer with me right now, let's pray. Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you was buried and was raised from the dead and that you're seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me right now. So Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me. Help me to walk this life in success. So I believe and I receive you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Was that easy? It's just that simple. You are now a child of the Most High God. You are a kingdom citizen. 
And I just want to welcome you to the family. We love you, and we'll be praying for you. And you know what? Tell your mom and dad what you just did. Tell your friends. Tell everybody, praise God, because Jesus is someone to be excited about. So we love you again. Be blessed.